Well, hello again, all my fluid art friends. I don't care if you like acrylic pouring or resin pouring or alcohol inks. You're still my fluid art friends. Um, listen, um, I gotta still mix the resin, but I don't know how many of you watched the live the other night, but let me make sure I can get this in camera. This is the round that I did on my live Tuesday night. And look at this. I got cells. I was so happy. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the edges yet. Um, I might gold leaf it. I don't know yet. So anyway, um, today is kind of another experiment that I saw somebody do with acrylics. And, of course, you know me, I got to try it in resin. Anyway, um, I'm going to be using um, black and white on the back of this. Um, both base tints from um, Stone Coat Countertops. And let me make my alcohol rag before I forget. And then I'm going to be doing these three colors, which is Just Resins JR Plum. Uh, just Resins, where did the label go? Uh, Lavender Luster. See how pretty that is? I'll show you what, what's in the cup. And one of my favorites from them breakfast at Tiffany's because I know that that breakfast at Tiffany's and I'm probably going to do <coughs> excuse me aluminum for the um, accents because breakfast at Tiffany's just looks so good next to those um next to aluminum so anyway I'm making my alcohol rag um <sighs> this is always my hardest part um um I'm looking at this. It's a 12-inch round. I hope I make enough um, resin. Oh, gloves. Gloves before I get my hands all sticky. Uh, where my Oh, there they are. I was looking for my black gloves. Anyway, um, I decided I had so much fun doing those lives that I'm going to do a live now every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, for those of you that can't make it, I'm sorry, but it will be there on replay, and um, um, you can comment afterwards, and or you know, or, or just ask any questions afterwards. Um, I'll try to do a little bit of a Q and A. Um, I have a moderator that's there, and she knows a lot about um, the different resins and tints that I'm using because I think she owns every one of them more than I own. That's for sure, and um. She's, she's very good. She welcomes everybody into the chat, and she can answer questions, because I did finally figure out how to get my laptop set up. Uh, oh, shoot. Um, I'm going to do eight ounces, which means I'm going to do two ounces, two ounces, and then one, 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 and not quite one. Um, I hope that's enough. You know what? I can do coasters. I'm going to do ten. Just to be on the safe side. I'm putting my hardener in first. Um, I got these neat cups off of Amazon. Th through the Artist Till Death um, Amazon shop that they have. Um, which, it, you know, they get a little tiny kickback. Whenever you uh, go to their influencer shop and buy supplies. And I just about bought everything that I can think of um, that I need off of their um, Amazon shop. They also have a website, artistilldeath.com. That's where I get um, most of my um, tints because the Just Resin is made in Australia. They're, that's where they're located at. So, I'm not paying the shipping from Australia. So, Artist Till Death is good enough to get them in for us. And that's where I order all my stuff. They got other brands, too, that are really great. Anyway, um, if you ever get a chance, if you don't, if you've never seen their, their, um, their um, YouTube channel, go to Artist Till Death on uh, YouTube. Check out their videos. They do a live almost every night, making sure I have, have it enough. Okay. Um, I'm using Stone Coat Connor Tops Art Coat. It is a one-to-one -one ratio, and then basically you mix it. Um, 
you try to scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. Um, don't worry about the bubbles because the bubbles will be disappearing once you put heat on it. When you finally get your resin on here, um, you'll get heat on it. Now, I didn't paint this board, but I did prep it. Oh, this was days ago. Um, I gave it a couple of coats in, of Minwax polyacrylic. I even did the sides. Reason you have to do that is because wood, being natural, air can seep through it. And you don't want air seeping up from the bottom, coming up through your resin. Because you'll get little air bubbles that you'll never get rid of then. You know, and this will be days after it, after it hardens, you'll see the air bubbles. So it's best just to seal any natural wood like this. Um, I seal my... And, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't know if MDF is natural or not. I think it's um, um, it's kind of like um, press board. I don't know. All I know is it's good to it's good to uh, paint on or to do resin on. Um, but I also do seal those too, front, back, and every side. You know, so I don't get air bubbles in that either. Okay, now I've been mixing this. Um, you just want to mix it till it's clear. And that looks pretty clear right there. And then you want to make sure you, you know, you've been scraping your sides, scraping the bottom. Okay. This is the little tool I'm going to use today. I did some, I need to poke that hole out. I don't like that um, thing being in the, that one hole being plugged up. Um, I did a pour a while back. I'll try to remember to link it in an I card up above. Okay, this is not going to come out, of course. <laughs> Okay, I should have taken a something to do that with. Okay, um, I'm gonna do black and white, and I'm gonna not not exactly a straight line, but I the person who did the acrylic pouring, I thought it looked kind of neat that they they did it they did it like this, but then they they tilted it and it came out pretty pretty awesome looking in the shape. So I don't need a whole lot of of the uh, resin for the background because it's not a very big board and I'm using two of them. Now for my background I am using the Stone Coat Countertops um, base tints. I'm using their black and their white. Those base tints will sell up uh, what's this extra cup for? Okay, I didn't need it. Um, I'm moving all my tints back so I don't get anything in on top of them. Um, all you got to do with uh, with their base coats to make sure that you're to get cells the proper way is you put it down first as a base coat. That's why it's called a base coat. And then you um, push the color over it. Um, move, move the color over it somehow. Whichever way you feel like moving the uh, resin. And if you do it like with a swipe paper, and there's different papers around that you can use. Um, you know, I use uh, I use freezer paper, which I get at the hardware store of all places, but it's cheaper there because it's a no-name brand. Um, but anyway, with the base tints, okay, I don't want that much. Um, I'll save this just in case I need to make some more. Um, Base, base tints for the uh, for the um, um, coasters if I have any of the other stuff left okay I have shaken this up less is more with these base tints you don't want to put a whole lot in there okay you want just enough to get it a little opaque you don't want to make it really opaque um I'm going to be having to get some more because I'm finding out that um, transferring it from the jar that it comes in to these squeeze bottles, which is not what it comes in, I have a problem. Uh, where's my white? There's my white. I have a problem with it drying up inside even after I've added some um, something that um, I'll, have to, I'll have to look for that um, to tell you what it is. If you're an ATD poor people group, then... You already know what it is because um, 
somebody mentioned it in there. Okay, ah, uh, let's mix up the black. And you want to make sure you mix it really, really well. Get get all the resin up from the bottom mixed in, because this doesn't really sink sink. I mean, it sinks down a little bit, but you don't want to put too much in. Okay, that is, that's pretty opaque. That's good. Okay, I'm going to put my base tin over there. Let me grab another stick and mix up this white. You just want to keep mixing. Um, because I didn't put any, I didn't use a stick to get it out of a jar, I don't have to worry about wiping it off of the uh, stick. I mean, I do sometimes, but you're not getting a lot of the pigment stuck to the stick. When you open these jars, you will see that you stir it a little bit to mix it up. And then, of course, you got all that pigment stuck to your stick. Okay, one, two, three, four. I wish I had opened these before I started. I know it'll open, but I don't know what the if it's gotten too cold. And no, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. It's just separated a little bit. So all you got to do to sep to, is to mix it up. This one's a little hard on the bottom. Um, when, you, when you get these, if they're a little hard, you can put them in what's called a warm bath, where you would put them in a dish with the lid on very, very super tight. And then you um, pour hot water in there and all the way up to the bottom of the lid so it doesn't seep in through the lid. And then, there we go. And then basically it um, softens it up because they're trying to protect, perf excuse me, they're trying to perfect their formula. Let me see. This is my silver. I want to put that over there. They're trying to protect, perfect. I get tongue-tied with some words. They're trying to protect their formula. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, I probably might have should put more, but we'll see. But see, you can't take color out, you but you can add more color. So if you're not sure, you put a little bit in. Um, so anyway, um, they're trying to perfect their formula because these come from Australia, so nothing happens to them. You know, they might be sitting in a warehouse for a while with the postal department. I love this color. Okay, put you in there. So anyway, um, the warm bath on the on the uh, just resin pigments, it works fine. It's not it's not their fault that it hardens up in there. It's the temperature change it goes through. Ooh, plum. This may be hard to see across the black, so I might end up doing a little bit more white on the background than black. And you're gonna you're gonna laugh when you see the technique I'm using, but I'm gonna do I'm gonna try it. Um, I can't really remember now who I saw do it because I do watch a ton of videos on YouTube. <laughs> I posted a picture last night. I was I had one on the TV. I was watching. Uh, 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 this guy, this lady's husband, doing a uh, doing a pour, and he is so so he's so comical. But uh, hey, his little methods work, okay. And I was watching that, and then I got a tone that there was a live coming on that I wanted to watch. So I paused the one on my TV screen and watched the live for a while on my um on my computer and then when it was over I um <laughs> I turned off the the YouTube on the computer and I'm trying to clean that jar off I got ugh, pigment on it and then what I did was was I then continued watching YouTube on the TV so I had two screens up at one time two different places okay this is the let me turn it around so I can read it the lavender luster now, because I had the stick in the pigment, I'm scraping off the majority of what's stuck to the stick because I don't want, I want all the pigment in the resin, and when you're mixing like this, it doesn't always 
come off the stick, so it's best to scrape to get it off. That's just, I just like passing along these little tricks that I know. And that goes for any, any stick. Wooden, um, a spatula that you might use, you know, these little spatulas, um, these little plastic stir sticks. Anything that you have put in the jar to steer it, you want to mix, um, you want to make sure you scrape it to get all the pigment off. And I hope I'm not talking too much, but I'm trying to explain everything and explaining little tricks too. Because I don't know how many newbies are watching me, so I'm explaining it all to you. Because um, for the newbies, this is an alcohol rag. This is just a cut up t-shirt with 91% alcohol on it. You're going to get your fingertips a little dirty um, while you're doing this. Even though you got gloves on. So you have the rag off to the side. And make sure it's well off to the side. Because it can catch on fire if you get too close to it with your torch. So I'm giving you that warning too. I'm not going to tell you. I didn't do it, but I... Somebody else did. And it's a good lesson learned without having to make the mistake myself. Okay, see how much pigment is staying on the stick? I'm just trying to get it all in there. Okay, that one looks mixed. Now my la last but not least, my favorite one of these colors, my Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is such a pretty color. And I, these colors will go together. I just don't know what the design's going to look like with the technique that I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm not going to explain that yet. Um, I got a strainer, but the strainer is just... It's not going to sit in the middle. Let's put it that way. How's that? It's not going to sit in the middle. Okay? So, I mean, don't be drinking coffee or a soda while I'm doing that, when I start doing that, because you might laugh out loud and you don't want to spit coffee all over your screen. Okay. Here we go. Let me give this one more mix. Okay. I am now going to put some black base on here because um you're going to want a, a thin coverage all over it i may have mixed too much i don't know yet we'll find out so this is kind of like a yin and yang with the uh with the two uh background tints but i don't um, it's not a straight yin and yang, okay? I just thought that this would look cute doing it the way they did it. The part that's going to make me wonder if it's going to work is going to be the strainer. Okay, you put your tints down. Now, I always... Wait a minute, let me use my tor torch. There it is. Um, whenever you turn on a torch or a heat gun or even your hair dryer, turn it off to the side. I don't know if you can hear it going for like five seconds. Don't point it during that five seconds at your piece. You're blowing the dust bunnies out, okay? I'm just going over it, getting rid of the um, bubbles and making it a little liquid because I'm going to push it around the edge and I don't want don't want it, you know, I want it to be a little bit soft, so it'll go up to the edge. I'm not too worried about my sides for the simple fact I usually paint my sides because any resin that gets pushed over the edge, it'll color the side a little bit, but resin always goes to the lowest point, so if it's going over the side, it's going to drip off. I didn't tape the back of this, I really should have, um... Because um, when you're done with a piece like this, um, you want to wipe off the sides just to kind of blend it in uniform, the whatever color might be there. And then you want to, um, hang on, um, and then you want to um, um, wipe your finger around the bottom to get rid of any drips that might be there. I was getting rid of the black because I'll just use a different finger because now I'm going into the white. I'm trying to keep this a distinct line between the two now resin's going to level out so don't worry you just want to make sure you get it spread around to cover any dry spots 
okay? That's basically really all I ever do is just push it up right to the edge, but not over it. Because you want to make sure that you don't have any dry spots. And I see one right up there. Oh, I see some more over here. Okay. But don't worry too much about your edge because when you put more resin on top, it's going to push that resin out. Okay, now I'm going to go over it one more time real quick. Oh, let me get that white up to the black. Okay, I'm going to go over it one more time real quick just to do the air bubbles, okay? Now, resin does not mix. The colors don't mix in a cup, okay? So, I'm going to just pour them in here, but wait till you see what I do after I pour them in there, okay? So, I'm going to put it right there, and then I'm going to do some of this. Because you don't want it to uh, sit in there, sit on there for too long. Okay, and then I'm going to do some of this. Okay. And then I'm going to do some of this, which is, you saw what colors I, I said they were. Okay, now, this is what he did. Hmm, not sure if I like it, but looks kind of cool, okay. Um, now, I'm going to bring out the big heat gun to get rid of, I want to move this over here, ah, get off the rag, and I want to move my stuff back. I like it. I think it's cool, okay? Almost looks like a little flower snake, I guess you could call it that. I don't know how if I'm gonna do any tilting, but I am gonna blow over it to get rid of the air bubbles. You don't wanna leave it in one spot for too long. Okay, now. Aha, now I see what those are. I got a couple of little bits in there so that came from the stuff that had dried up inside the uh, bottle you know I really don't want to disturb this that much but let's see if I can blow a little bit of this black and white that way. See, I don't really want to disturb this at all. We want to get some of it to go over to the edge. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to put a little bit of the aluminum on there for accents. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow the little train of the uh, of the flower snake. I don't know what you would call it. I'm sure everybody else is seeing something else in here. Okay. Mm, see, ran out. Okay, so let me come back the other way. Yeah, I didn't need all this aluminum, but like I said, I'll probably do coasters, which I'll show you in tomorrow's video, along with how this dried. Oh, that is so pretty. Okay, and I, I got some really, really cool cell action over there, and I got some here. So, I'm just going to blow out the silver a little bit. 
I don't want to mess up too much of the cells. try to blow that silver over it just a little bit see the one thing about the stone coat um, base tints you get cells if you put the color over them not the other way around not putting it over the color but also um, if you have too much if you add too much to the cup you don't get cells and if you use too much heat you don't get cells Okay, unfortunately, this is deciding it's going to run this way. So, I'm going to turn that around. And you know what? I'm going to call it done. Okay, so let me know what you think about it in the comments. You know, what, what do you what you like about this? What you didn't like about this? Okay, and I do want to thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed... Go ahead, please do, and hit the little notifications bell so you'll know, be notified of all my upcoming videos and my live videos every Tuesday. Um, any comments or criticisms, put them down in the comment section. I do read all of them because I'm not that big a channel yet, um, so I do have the time to read all of them. Um, and... I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video, and I appreciate every one of you, and I love the resin right out of you. Bye for now.